I will set the zeitgeist straight. The movie has too much of the cast in it. Man, I'm saddled with Jeff Goldblum, <laughs> the world's most uncharismatic <laughs> actor. But it has no poetry. That's not what this is about. The so. problem was when the hero started facing adversity. Get off your soapbox, Laura Dern. <laughs> I want to square off on this guy at a dinner party. The music was thick. So far, you have not dazzled me. I'm just letting you know. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome to Off The Mark, good chat on bad takes of great movies. I'm Dave Colombo. I'm Mick Andrews. This is a show where we like to kind of talk about the people who got it wrong. The movie reviewers who watched the greatest movies of all time and went, <laughs> no. And and again, like, like in our last episode, we kind of talked about the idea of some level of accountability. You can't escape. You can't delete your your uh, review off of the internet and and think that like no one will ever know that I had this horrible horrible take because <laughs> that that in my mind these reviewers are like oh no because they, they all hang they're, out and they're, they're scared of us now <clears throat> oh no have you seen that new podcast <laughs> oh no <laughs> we're coming for you <clears throat> so what movie are we talking about this week? We are talking about an absolute classic, one that shows up on every list to the point where it's so ubiquitous, people simply go like, well, duh, of course. A uh, movie about the power of redemption, uh, the triumph of the human spirit, the indomitable power of, of uh, you know, friendship and overcoming. We're talking, of course, about Shawshank Redemption. I would probably argue that this is the, the one movie that I don't think I've ever heard someone go overrated. Literally, at least somebody will have a negative thing to say about every movie, no matter how beloved, no matter how many people put it on their list. I can't think of a time where someone's gone like, it's actually not that good. Or, you know what doesn't hold up? It, it's across the board, a complete masterpiece. Yeah, it's phenomenal. It's it's a great movie in every regard. Oh, I think a lot of great movies do certain things well. You can have a great movie that's extremely well written and that can like a great script can carry a movie. You can have a movie where the actors, everybody is just knocking it out of the park. And so even, you know, material that otherwise might not have crushed is it elevate is elevated by performances. I think this is just everything is swinging for the fences every the the script is beautifully written the uh direction i i love the way that they show the uh prison throughout the movie mm -hmm. their use of light and dark in in the prison the acting morgan freeman and and, and you know uh tim robbins are are unbelievable in this movie as well as the supporting cast Sorry. so many of the of the other movies that we've talked about and that are like the greatest movies of all time really do require i mean we're talking about movies that have dinosaurs and giant <laughs> uh sharks and um a literal fake world within the world that we know so many of the greatest movies ever require like like Here's here's the high concept thing that's gonna make the make you keep watching. Shawshank Redemption is a movie, is a prison movie. It is a guy in jail. That's yeah. it. It's there's, pretty there's, static location wise. There's not also a, a a bunch of angels who come down. There's not also you know, a tornado that rips through the town. It's, it, it's, it's literally just let's watch a character study. And I mean, I don't know if it's just been so long since I've seen the movie that like, like it's never stated whether or not he's guilty or not. No, it does. Another inmate shows up at the prison and says his, a cellmate he had in a previous prison bragged about the murder i guess maybe i'm interpreting that as being like that's definitive but you're right yeah. in the sense that like it doesn't conclusively prove it's he does this guy says he killed a he killed a, a a golf pro who was having sex with his uh lover at the time i always uh, interpreted that as like oh that that 
is a sincere possibility, but because he never just straight up goes like it's never corroborated. Yeah, that's a great point. Um, <clears throat> God, maybe it's stop. maybe it's just the way I've, I viewed the movie where I just, uh, you know, I'm so rooting for Andy that I'm like, well, there it is. I mean, but yeah, you're, <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> you're you're right in that 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 is never fully proven Excellent but i point. but like the fact that like the movie for so much of uh, so much of the film is not even about that 90 mm -hmm. percent of the movie is is not like oh we're watching this innocent man you know like we we don't know <laughs> you know it's not about his it's innocence. not about that yeah it's not i mean the other the other like kind of the other lead in this movie the other side of the coin of this this almost a double act in this movie is morgan freeman who is unreservedly guilty mm -hmm. he he is like i did what i'm here for but to the broader point of, of what you're saying it's the fact that they're in prison is the important element of it their guilt is incidental in fact like you know there's it's clear that a lot of these characters are, are did you know they all joke about how they're innocent mm -hmm. but they're they are crim they're lifer criminals they're in a in a long term secu security prison uh you know the the old man brooks was there for 50 years so he did something you wild to, you, you got to gotta, be there. You, Mick, you have to warn me before you're going to bring up Brooks because I will start crying on this podcast <laughs> i That's will I, I don't remember how young i was when i first watched the the movie but the mm -hmm. the the heartbreak of like he's never seen a car yeah like yeah <laughs> he said i saw one once when i was a kid yeah, now they're yeah everywhere like oh what a, and he's trying to like such a bag time of groceries like yeah yeah uh i mean it's it's heartbreaking but my my point about like the like the whether or not he's guilty or not try try to write a story that takes place in a prison that is not predominantly about someone fighting to for their innocence but is rather just fighting to get out try to write a story and have it be halfway decent let alone absolutely achingly beautiful and and poignant it's a masterpiece in writing in terms of in in that sense and also performances that um the the opening scene of this movie is literally a a drunk tim robbins st sitting outside his uh wife who is having an affair in, in the house of this his where his wife is having an affair with a loaded gun and there's something about his performance where you're like oh when he says he didn't do it i believe him like i, I <laughs> you know like yeah. i want that part i want that to be true even though they've yeah. shown me they, they don't show they don't at any point because he says uh, I thought better of it. I threw the gun into the river. Uh, they never found the gun. They don't show him doing that. Mm -hmm. They show him outside the house, though, for sure. And the whole movie, like the thing that I love about it is the whole movie, he's he's so soft spoken and reserved and quiet and really kind of only speaks when spoken to. Like he has the energy of somebody who is extremely feels a massive amount of guilt for what they've done. And, yeah. and and maybe lying to us and lying to himself like but again we don't know and that's not what it's about you want this character to succeed you know just to touch back again on the writing um i just I pulled up one of um the it's not the opening line but you know basically the introduction to red and andy dufresne showing up at the prison is the line of red narrating so when andy dufresne came to me in 1949 and asked me to smuggle rita hayworth into prison for him i told him no problem that's just that's the that's i'm i'm so hooked yeah like what is what is happening like what do you yep. mean it's the whole reason i'm watching in one sentence because it shows to me a lot of like andy dufresne's character that he wants he wants he wants contraband. Uh, mm -hmm. He, what does he mean to smuggle a person into prison? Uh, <laughs> does not say smuggle a poster of Rita Hayworth into prison. Uh, and in fact, when he makes the request, he doesn't ask for that either. I just thought that was always fun. That he I says, know that that like Stephen King, it, 
I, I know that Stephen King like has written a lot of, I mean, Green Mile and and things that are like not um, horror, but it is always amazing when someone who is like known for a genre, a thing, also hits a grand slam outside of that known genre. This would be the equivalent of like like Michael Phelps winning a, a Super Bowl. Because it's like, we all knew he's he's good at that thing, but like, God, uh, wow. Yeah, it's just a storyteller who, who knows what he's doing. I'm a huge Stephen King fan. And, um, uh, you know, a lot of his stuff is wild and out there and doesn't mm-hmm. really kind of sing the way this does. Um, but um, I'm not sure if this is a line straight from the short story, but it reads like it is um yeah the line i just quoted um but um, but again that's what's amazing like the point that i was making earlier where like there's nothing cosmic or weird or macabre that's going on it is a straight it's story it's just a raw yep compared to, like the fact that stephen king has been known to be like and everybody's a vampire like the fact that like no for this story i'm just gonna tell an incredible straight yeah. story yeah. that doesn't that doesn't need to rely on anything like that it's so simple mm-hmm. it's a guy literally biding his time um it needed to be well written from a narration standpoint and it needed to be well acted and it obviously is um I would I, say that this movie single-handedly, I know that that um, Morgan Freeman did stuff before, but I would argue that this movie single-handedly made everybody feel like they knew Morgan Freeman personally. You know, like certain mm-hmm. actors feel like your family and any movie that they're in, you're like, I just feel warm now that you're here. Mm-hmm. I think this movie single-handedly turned him into everybody's grandpa. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's there's definitely that feeling of relatability to his character, and as an as the narrator, he's very comforting, um, mm-hmm. and has has this perspective on it that um, uh, none of the other characters do. He has, he he does throughout the movie seems like this one level removed that he's like there with us instead of like being in the prison. Um, I also think it put him on the map for what he's probably most known for, which is narration. Uh, His, his voice is, I don't know. This is somebody, please correct me if I'm wrong, but if there are other movies where he was like, if this is, you know, just the latest in a long line of movies where he's the narrator, but um this is the f- the one I think of when I think of uh, Morgan Freeman's voice. Is I think of the Andy Dufresne. You know, like that's in yeah. my head. It's I can't sa- even say the name without hearing him say mm-hmm. it. Yeah. Uh, so. that's. Can you name another movie where <laughs> saying a character's name you automatically hear it in the voice of another character in the movie? <laughs> oh, I got. Like, I, I have one. I have okay. one. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Kevin? <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair enough. No, fair enough. No, and the no. fact that you you brought that up as quickly. Kevin! <laughs> yeah. It's another thing to give it credit for, and the reason it's probably had the longevity that it that it has is that it is that perfect made for TV. We'll put this on TBS every single day. There's very little that we would need to cut out, and and it will just be on TV all the time. And everyone will be like, oh, yeah, okay, let's watch. Okay, sure. Yeah, 100%. It's how I watched it the first time, uh, Cards on the Table, was, and, and not in one sequence. Yeah, this me is too. A movie, this is a movie that I, I watched in a Frankenstein manner over the course of five years, uh, catching it bits and pieces until I, I had put all of it in sequence together. Yeah, uh, me too. In, Same in exact fact, thing. I don't think I really watched it beginning to end um, before, like, maybe a few years ago. Every scene of the movie is like a painting that that stands alone, that, like, has a beginning, like, like the, the rooftop scene. Every moment of the movie has, like, a beginning, a middle, and an end. It is its own little piece. So wherever you are in the movie, you're like, I could start watching this now and, and pick up most of the context 
The only other movie that I ever had that was like that. Did I ever tell you the story of me watching uh, uh, Goodfellas for the first time? No. I, I, it was a dual layer DVD and I did not know that. So it had one half of the movie on one side and one half of the movie on the other. Ah. So I was, I'd never seen Goodfellas. I put it on and it starts with her on top of him with the gun <laughs> in, in his face. And, and I was like, I watched the movie and I'm like, okay, so it's only like 50 minutes long and they don't really like do a lot of exposition, but I picked up who everybody was and <laughs> what, everything that was going on, and what a way to start! Wow. Yeah, yeah. Like it's... in the middle, you know, <laughs> literally act two. It's but I, I feel the same way about like like Shawshank is that very any point in the movie within like the 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 first half you can flip it on and get it. And know exactly what's going on, and you, you know, you should watch the whole thing, but you haven't missed enough where, like, oh, I can't follow this. All right, shall we jump in? Yeah, let's get into it. So, uh, 1994 is when this movie came out. It was a very good year. Uh, what a year it was! What a year it was indeed. Um, box office for uh, 1994 was uh, bonkers. Uh, Forrest Gump, Lion King. Uh, interview with a vampire, I believe, was still in the theaters. I, I'm I'm looking through a list of the entire year. Uh, Natural Born Killers, yeah, uh, just a a ton of fantastic, huge movies. But here's a full list of what came out in one year in 1994. First off, just at the top, you ha- this was the year of Jim Carrey. Mm-hmm. You had The Mask, uh, Ace Ventura, Pet Detective and dumb and dumber all in one year that's like he must have i I don't care how like like down to earth he was he must have been like i'm about to leave the most amazing mark on on comedy cinema since chaplin yeah oh 100 it's it's the kind of he had in one year the kind of uh you know body of work that people dream of their entire lives so we have those movies. We also have, as I mentioned, Forrest Gump, Lion King, True Lies, uh, yeah. Clear and Present Danger, Speed, Pulp Fiction, uh, Star Trek Generations, which might not matter to most, but matters to me. Uh, everybody hates that. That's That was my first Star <laughs> Trek movie. And I was just I kind of it. like, it's amazing. <laughs> I love it so much. I was out I saving the galaxy when your grandfather was in diapers. <laughs> everybody we should do we should do that movie (laughs) nobody just like why are they doing star trek generation because it's amazing yeah you know we'll do 40 for you one for us that's how we do (laughs) but yeah we also had uh four weddings and a funeral natural born killers beverly hills cop three wow um shawshank um you know ed wood clerks Shawshank wasn't even in like the top 20 grossing movies for that year. That's insane. Uh Shawshank grossed a total of about 28 million. Amazing that that like just just put it on TV. Trust me. It'll it'll It's going to work. It's going to work. Um it didn't work for everybody. So this is from the Washington Post, September 23rd, 1994. The Shawshank Redemption starts off with the familiar brutality of a prison movie. Convicted in the late 1940s for the murder of his wife and her lover, banker Tim Robbins is thrown into the slammer, the Shawshank Penitentiary in Maine, for two consecutive life sentences. Seasoned inmate Morgan Freeman, the narrator in this story, watches as the soft-spoken, vulnerable prisoner undergoes the inevitable uh, gang sexual assault. Uh, prison, Freeman tells the audience in that inimitably authoritative voice, is no fairy world. In this case, he's dead wrong. Shawshank, based on Stephen King's novella Rita Hayworth and the Shawshank Redemption, is a complete fairy tale, a sentimental yarn full of the darndest twists and turns since Frank Capra rolled his cameras. Oh no, he's interpreting good he's he's misinterpreting good cinematography as well this is a fairy tale. This isn't what real prison is like. Where's the grit? Where's yeah. the, 
Yeah. I love it. He's like, you know, of course there's a sexual assault early on, but then nothing about it is is it's actual ever prison. Again. Yeah. Wow. It's, except for the fact that Morgan Freeman explicitly explains <laughs> Andy would periodically show up covered in bruises like yeah. every every so often. And then he says those first two years were the toughest for him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that's not enough for you to tell you that this is prison? Okay. Okay. Cinematographer Roger Deakins' images are burnished with that long time ago golden glow. Oh, the inmates, shut up. <laughs> as the inmates are ultimately a bunch of cute pushovers. And the worst thing about prison give or take an imitation uh, sexual assault or three, is the boredom. In prison, intones Freeman, a man will do anything to keep his mind occupied. What Robbins, who has proclaimed his innocence all along, does to keep his mind occupied is the punchline of the story. What does that even, what does that mean? Punchline is As such in a like weird the, phrase. The, 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 the focal point? <laughs> that or like even... the ultimate, like, reveal like the the i mean it does a a lot of this reviewer does make sense if you interpret it as them completely misreading the movie as a comedy yeah yeah i I kept waiting for the punchline such a specific yeah it is such a comedy term of art yeah that it's not like a like a drama doesn't have a punchline it has a like um, it has a focus. It has a or or, um, or, or it could have a twist, like it ha- a reveal, a crescendo. That, you yeah. know, but you know, yeah, okay. Uh, anyway, uh, the institution is run by Warden Bob Gunton, a cliched sociopathic despot who likes beating his prisoners to death to make a point, but will not abide religious blasphemy. You kind of countering your earlier point Thank that this you. is yes. a fairy tale version Thank of, you. Yeah. of prison. That it's run by a psychopath. It's run by a psychopath who will kill people. But now back to this fairy tale version of prison. But all but all the prisoners are adorable. And I will say this to his point. The prisoners are portrayed as human beings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They are yeah. portrayed. How dare they? They are not defined by the worst thing that they did uh, in this movie at all. Um, perhaps a discerning viewer would understand that's the point. Uh, yeah, that we are think... not. We are not the worst thing. But hey, not everybody sees that. I okay. think you nailed it. I think this reviewer was like, "Well, when are they just gonna wear what they did across their forehead for the entire movie? Why when... don't they act like you know savage?" guilty people yeah 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 yeah. that's yeah that might be it yeah gunton is enthusiastically supported by sadistic guard clancy brown who enjoys a regular round of assault and battery himself and murder i think by the way can we pause here clancy brown crushes that role he is the the warden and yeah uh, yeah, bob gunton is great in it too yeah Uh, but clancy i uh, Clancy Brown has a ruthlessness to him in this he movie. He was made for that movie. Yeah. Uh, awesome. Awesome uh, performance. I think he was born in that uniform. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Like, I can't even, yeah. Talking about how it's a fairy tale. It's like day one, a guy walks into this prison and is beaten to death. That's the first day. That's day, day That's one. 10 minutes into this movie. Yeah. Um, and on top of that, the brutality is so enforced in the characters that Andy goes, what was his name? And everybody goes, shut the fuck up. That like, we don't, we don't, we don't humanize here. We can't like, we can't emotionally afford to be connected to a guy who like he's dead. That's all that matters. I mean, Uh, the reviewer must've been, you know, taking a pee break during, you know, during every moment where the brutality is shown. Sure. But they're they're shown with a golden kind of gloss on them. So yeah. like, you know. They're they're backlit by the sun. I don't understand like it's yeah. it's yeah. too. And nice. do you remember the explanation for why he died? Not it was avoidable. It's clearly stated as avoidable. They, mm. they were talking to like one of the orderlies who works in the uh works works in the infirmary. Um and he goes, uh uh well when he got brought in, Doc had already gone home for the day. Yeah. So he just sat there until the morning. <laughs> it's just, mm. that's so 
that's so dark and so brutal. No, the uh, stakes are accurately and adequately put that he's got to get the hell out of here. Yeah, it's insane. Yeah. But it's clear from the start that Robbins, despite the hardships, is emotionally protected by his own innocence. He charms everyone and eventually parlays his business skills into a useful commodity. By the end, these grim authoritarians and jailbirds are, jailbirds are eating out of his hand. In fact, Robbins's effect on everyone is so cheesily messianic, they should have called this Forrest Gump goes to jail. They don't, they don't, they are very wary of him at the beginning. He's repeatedly beaten and assault, sexually and, assaulted. And sexually assaulted. Like, and then when the minute he indicates at any point that he might double cross the warden. He gets thrown in solitary for two months, which is the inmates all say has never been done before. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, he, uh, he develops friends over 19 years. Is that mm -hmm. what you mean by this messianic, you know, like, like adoration that they have for him? Yeah. Yeah. That's probably where they're, I would say that, that messianic kind of like he just walks into a, like this situation where he, everyone's eating out of his hand would be true if this movie took place over the course of like a month, but right. it's 19 years. And and he earns it. He, he, he like helps them read and learn to read. He, he teaches them how to do their taxes. He yeah. gives them a, a, a day of beer drinking in the sunlight like literally the 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 guards have to like give them ice cold beer like he's he's th there's reasons why it's not like well he's the lead so they have to follow him they they have to love him <laughs> so cheesily messianic just completely missing the scale of what you're watching i yeah. think like speaking of jail Shawshank the movie Seems to last about half a life sentence. Ugh, I knew that was coming. <laughs> you knew that was coming. Yeah. I story, felt like I was in jail. Ah, yeah. Oh, boy. The story, chiefly about the 20-year friendship between Freeman and Robbins, becomes incarcerated in its own labyrinthine sentimentality. It wanders down subplots at every opportunity and ignores an abundance of narrative exit points before settling on the aforementioned finale. N name name one please N name one is Aaron he talking subplot. about brooks because if he talk if he's referring to the fact that brooks is don't you don't, don't you dare, dare don't you dare don't you dare talk ill i mean ha but but like no because then morgan freeman as like more then red takes the same bus shows up in the same place same room yeah. The same room. So we are seeing how Morgan Freeman is interpreting his freedom, you know, compared to the way Brooks did. It, and it only makes sense because we watched Brooks not able to handle it. And it also it just shows that uh, I, I saw that as like a, an element of like the timelessness of the situation of someone coming out of prison. How yeah. how you come out without any options like there's no there's been zero change in the lot in life you receive when you come out of prison over the course of 20 years when between when when Brooks gets out and when Morgan Freeman gets out identical experiences leaving prison despite yep. 20 years of difference they're still in the same level of complete inability or like a complete lack of resources to help them uh, reassimilate to society. This is at the time. I, I don't really want to speak towards what's what goes on for modern day, uh, you know, parolees, but um, that how how he was institutionalized, how he he preferred being in prison because he understood that world. Yeah. Um, and how easy it could have been. There's a scene where Morgan Freeman goes walking down the street and he looks in a pawn shop and sees guns. And he's just like, what if I just be, you can, I think it, the narration says something to the effect of like, I thought about it. Like, just what if I, I just go, broke I go my back. parole? I could go home. I could go. They, the Brooks writes in the letter, he refers to jail, prison as home. Yeah. Like, uh, cause of course it is. He spent 50 years there. And, yeah. Um, 
Next, he says, uh, and leave it to pandering first time director Frank Darabont Whoa. to ensure <laughs> no audience member leaves his film unsure of the ending. Heaven forbid a movie should end with a smidgen of mystery. There's plenty of mystery. There's plenty of mystery. It, it's not it's not did he make it out? But it's like, what are they going to do with the rest of their life? There's plenty of mystery. It was probably when I was younger, the one problem that I had with the movie was that like, oh, I want to follow them more. I, I want see, more. I want to yeah. see their friendship on the outside. <laughs> if you're first time directing, you you pull out the Shawshank Redemption. The, the Shawshank Redemption. Then, then <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> There's Crazy. Dude. To look at Frank Darabont's body of work in terms of what he's directed after this, you know, I, he a lot of a lot of horror stuff. He the Blob, Fly, Tales from the Crypt, mm -hmm. uh, um, worked on you know Frankenstein, worked on the Adventures of Young Indiana Jones, some of the most phenomenal Green Mile, The Mist. Walk, he worked on the Walking Dead series. I don't see him as a pandering director at all. Um, he's definitely not a sentimental one. Uh, he uh, no, I thought the end of the uh, the mist was pretty sentimental. I thought that really kind of, <laughs> if I remember the end of the mist correctly, it really kind of left everyone going home happy. You know, <laughs> this movie is <laughs> this movie is sentimental insofar as it gives characters a redemptive arc, but it's literally called the Shawshank Redemption. <laughs> yeah. Can you give it a pass, please? It couldn't be clearer that this is going to be a movie with a, a positive ending for its characters. That's a great point that I had never really thought about where like, it's telling you he gets out, you know, yeah. like, like in the title, it's telling you that like, and 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 now it's let's watch the process of how it actually plays out and how mm -hmm. this mystery unfolds. Yeah. And again, it's not about redemption in the sense of like he's ultimately proven innocent. Um, that's not the point. That's incidental. It's redemption in the sense that the injustice that they were suffering under. Uh, I think Andy Dufresne specifically says, like, I've. I've paid for my sins and then some, you know, yeah. like, like even like for what I have done and what I did wrong, um, you know, I, I have, I have suffered enough. Um, and it's a search for that redemption, not redemption in the eyes of the law. It's like a personal redemption to find your own, you know, life on your own terms. Uh, Can I just say as a quick side note, Every time I put on fancy shoes, I hear, how often do you look at a man's shoes? Like, I, I hear that in my head. It's like every time I'm wearing nice shoes, it's just, there's a line yeah. in that movie for every moment. It's just every, oh. Yeah, that's oh. true. That's true. I, when I watched it in prep for this, I laughed out loud at the, it's now become a meme that I see all over the place, but um the one where all the books are in the warden's office and uh, Clancy Brown brings uh, Tim Robbins into the room. He goes, um, and he goes, look, and he like throws him into the room and Tim Robbins goes, what is all this? And Clancy Brown says like, you tell me fuck stick. It's got your name on it. <laughs> and I've seen that as a meme for like, <laughs> like, like my wife talking to me when I order too much from Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> when all the packages come in from Amazon, like, yeah, what is all great. this? You tell me, you tell me it's, like, it's got your name, got your on. name on it. <laughs> Spot on. Uh, it's perfect. Uh, still, although Shawshank gradually deteriorates, or oh. if you're a sentimentalist, gets better and better. Okay, who hurt you, dude? Who hurt you? <laughs> It's, I mean, that's really what it is, is like, um, I walked into this thinking it'd be a prison movie. Yeah. Why aren't these people slowly destroying themselves? Mm -hmm. Why, mm -hmm. why isn't the situation getting worse and worse and worse for him? The cinematography is too fancy. The, the music is too nice. The story is unfolding in a, in a very human way. This is not what I thought I was getting. I'm mad.
I'm up, I'm upset. Yeah. yeah. Why aren't these people ruined? Yeah. By, <laughs> yeah, by yeah, yeah. being in prison. <laughs> Why aren't they broken? Yeah. It's it's almost like this movie is about the unbreakable spirit and hope. Uh but that wouldn't it's a prison movie. It wouldn't yeah, be a about prison that. Movie. How dare they? <laughs> yeah. The principal performances are the most obvious pleasures. Robbins with those bulging baby blues and that voluptuous baby mouth. <laughs> okay. <laughs> exudes the perfect kind of innocence to sell this tall tale. Okay. I don't think you're allowed to use the word baby twice when you're describing a grown man's face. That's a great point. That's a great <laughs> also because I have a one baby rule. You're a movie critic and you're all about the lofty prose and the, you know, the exorbitant <laughs> dialogue. The fact that you're like it's baby face and his baby hair and his, his baby, baby eyes. Mouth. And... <laughs> it was like, dude, I think you ran out of adjectives there. I get baby blues. That's a that's a stock phrase people say. But to say that voluptuous baby mouth. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. No, those don't go <laughs> side by side. That, Stop that doesn't, it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> voluptuous and baby just don't no. No, 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 no. Yeah. Uh you know, Tim Robbins with those baby blues and that newborn mouth of his. <laughs> you know what I mean. Oh, I need a shower after this review. <laughs> Uh, as for Freeman, he's a master of comedic and poignant cadence. Okay. He could read the local real estate listings and make you weap or laugh. I love, I love those moments because we get them in every review where like they'll, they'll throw in something that we're supposed to like, we're supposed to bypass it, but it's, it's a genuine observation about how good something is. Yeah. This is phenomenal. But back to what I was talking about. But anyway. And it's like, you know that thing that's the backbone of the movie that's what everybody remembers and is a lovely, incredible, really hard to pull off thing? That, but also it's schmaltzy, you know? <laughs> like, well, listen to the listen to the line that he chooses as his example. Oh God. These walls are funny, he intones, uh, meaning Freeman. First you hate them, then you get used to them. After time passes. You get so you, you depend on them. From Freeman, these words read like existential thunder. It's like, yeah. Yeah. Because they are. Be like, yeah, that's yeah. the that's one of the points of the movie is, mm -hmm. is the, <laughs> the feeling of, of dependency and being worn down by this place. But why uh, was it why was it that when I wrote that on a bathroom <laughs> stall, suddenly it lost some of the intensity? Like, yeah, when Morgan Freeman sang it, a, a, a professional actor in the context <laughs> of the movie, it carries a little bit of weight. It has gravitas. When, yeah. when you just write it out, it's going to look like a movie line. Yeah. OK, we got one more line. It's, it's fairly innocuous, but he says, when Robbins, upon making Freeman's acquaintance, asserts that he's innocent of the double murder, Freeman smirks. You're going to fit right in, he tells Robbins. You know that everybody in here is innocent. It's an interesting place to kind of, I'm out. <laughs> yeah, th th that's something that I notice a lot is these reviewers kind of go like, and I'll just leave this here. And here's a little, here's a little. Taste. I don't even need to button this up. I'm just going to like <laughs> end it on the. That I think a lot. I've made my point. <laughs> yeah. But also, again, you're just stating something that works in the context. Like you can't just communicate that a thing happened. And, and have us assume that, that that means it was bad. Because in context, that's a great moment. That's a very like telling moment. It's yeah. an important moment in the story. And you're just stating what happened. Right yep. over their head. Completely. This is pissing me off more than a lot of them. And I think it's because <laughs> what we talked about with, like, this movie has no, nobody I know has anything to say but praise for this movie yes to hear yes. people go like ugh uh, i'm i'm just like i don't know what you watched our regular viewers will know we frequently do uh a segment at the end called two reviews and a lie where we find uh audience reviews user reviews and um i we take two real written reviews and we write our own uh this movie we will not be doing that because I could not find 
two reviews that were negative. Mm -hmm. I found one review that at best was like, well, one literally says, I don't, I I don't really know what the fuss is about. Yeah. Uh, And it still three stars. (laughs) Still Uh, gave it three is the lowest. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Another one I found that's two stars and it says, look, I understand that it's only predictable, melodramatic, and cliche because everybody else copied it. It's still predictable, melodramatic, and cliche. Maybe I'm just a Philistine. I understand why people like this movie. There Two you stars. Go. Yeah. Like a fair review. Not that's the uh, effectively not for me. Uh yeah. I understand why it's important though. Uh and that I think those two reviews dropped it from dropped it down to what it is on Rotten Tomatoes, which is a 98% <laughs> approval rating yeah. from the audience. Yep. Oh, near unanimous love for this movie. It's not going to get more. It's not going to get higher than that. I dude. don't think it gets higher. I don't know if yep. I've seen. I've definitely not seen higher, but um, at least with the amount of reviews the Shawshank cast. All righty. <clears throat> Got one more review. Um, this one, interestingly, uh, not a review from the time, but mm. not a, re- a recent review. Somebody, for some reason, at Slant Magazine went back in 2004 and reviewed this movie. Um, hey, Pete, we need you to fill this. Uh, we need you to fill a page. I don't. What, I, what do you got? Well, I've never really understood Shawshank Redemption. Perfect. What's helpful, though, the reason I uh, mentioned that is because... This is a review of a person who panned the movie back when it came out. Oh, interesting. And so there's a little bit of retrospective on it. Love I couldn't it. find couldn't find the original review, but they referenced the fact that they were like, it's it's got that age old which we love. You and I both love the hated it then, hate it now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. so okay, here we go. Uh about a month before the Shawshank Redemption was released in theaters, director Frank Darabont showed the film to uh to a crowd of film students at NYU. After the screening, a student surprised Darabont by saying that he was insulted at the depiction of the uh, the Butch sisters posse that repeatedly assaults Tim Robbins in the film. Though the student was ceremoniously shot down by the teary-eyed and mostly straight crowd, a sensitive Darabont managed a semi-apologetic response, pointing out that he had dedicated the film to his former agent, Alan Green, who helped Darabont get the directing gig at Castle Rock Entertainment, but who had died of AIDS shortly before the film finished shooting. Okay. I dismissed it then, but I should have known that Shawshank Redemption would become as beloved as it is now, ranking alongside other overrated classics like Casablanca, Schindler's List, and the genuinely terrible Star Wars. Okay. All right. As as I mean, one of the greatest movies of all time. It's a bold bold move, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off. It's, <laughs> it's I mean <laughs> I when I read that sentence, I was like, oh, I need to I, I need to memorize this list because I want to see Dave's face after I say each each movie. I what did he start with? He started with Casablanca. Casablanca, Schindler's List, and the genuinely terrible Star Wars. Right, 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 right. Okay, all right. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's telling mm-hmm. us who he is. He, it's, 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 they are telling yeah. us who they are. Like, this yeah. is, yeah. Yeah. The appeal of this film isn't exactly inexplicable. Where Douglas Sirk and George Cucker made melodramas, quote-unquote, women's pictures, and directors like Robert Aldrich and John Huston often made rock-solid noirs, quote-unquote, men's pictures, Darabont does something in between, Ingenu- ingeniously, at least from a marketing perspective, craft- crafting films for, quote unquote, the sensitive straight man. And then in parentheses, you know, that strange breed of heterosexual dudes who don't have a problem telling a room full of people they're about to pinch a loaf, but are careful to leave an empty seat between themselves and male friends when they go to the movies together. I have apps. I can't. I mean, we talked about it before. I understand all of those words in isolation. Yep. Yep. I I understand what every word that you said means if you just said those words individually. 
strung together in that way, I I do not understand what the point. Like we're a couple of sentences in, and I do not know what's happening. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm so, very confused about what we're talking about right now. So I hate Star <laughs> Wars, and I should have known that this movie would appeal to specifically sensitive straight men who say that they'll pinch a loaf, but also leave spaces in between seats because they're homophobic and don't want to sit too close to their guy friends. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that's who this movie's for, Dave. That's who this movie's for. Do, do <laughs> go on. <laughs> <laughs> and Hey, listen, uh, I understand that, and I respect, and like I think it's fine that movies are made for a, like a demographic. There are definitely certain movies that are designed to appeal to a certain market of people. Um, this this review has basically bifurcated the world into men's movies and women's movies. Uh, I mean, are, are you are you reading that based on what you've read to me so far? Because that's not clear. <laughs> <laughs> well, he does he does drop a couple of he d does that kind of look at how many fancy names I know. So let me read it back to you. He okay. Goes, Where Douglas Sirk and George Cucker made melodramas, quote unquote, women's pictures, and directors like Robert Aldrich and John Hus Huston H often Houston. made Houston. Thank you. Excuse yeah. me. Um often made rock-solid noirs, quote-unquote, men's pictures. Darabont does something in between, ingenuously, at least from a marketing perspective, crafting films for the sensitive straight man. So he's basically saying, here are the two worlds of film, and look at this little sliver that Darabont's managed to cut in between. And it's like, that's... This movie came out in 1994. That is uh, demonstrably not how cinema is, you know divided right but also like i mean I, d does he go on to explain precisely how that is the case uh how, how like does he say i have not met one person besides a heterosexual uh but sensitive man ha has enjoyed the movie like like no, no, he does not explain that. So you're no. just making a declarative statement he's, that only one type of person likes Dave, this movie. Dave, he's made his point. He's made his point. Yeah, you're he's right. He's made his point. Okay. He, he described these sensitive straight men, okay? Okay. <laughs> All right, I guess we're moving on. Can I just say the, 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 in, the, the, the condescension and the insulting nature of a, of a uh, reviewer to... I think the implication is because this, because this movie is almost exclusively cast with men because it is an all male prison that this movie is somehow for men. Right. It's just so condescending. It's not, and it's and not, I it's don't not. care. I don't care how like sure I am that a movie was made for like a specific demographic. I would never feel comfortable on print or on camera saying declaratively this was who this movie was made for even if i know i'm right just because that's such a limiting point yeah and There's also nothing to you that. didn't make the movie you don't right. know who this movie was made for um they, and by those... now the movie has shown that it's been po very popular so universally the, you're yeah. literally already proven wrong there's there there's no movie on a movie can't be number three on IMDb's top 250 movies of all time. It's yeah. number three. There's no mo there's no world in which that movie does not have universal appeal. It speaks to everybody on some level. The fact that, that they're men is so incidental to the point of the movie. Unless the next sentence that you haven't read yet is him going like, and what a coincidence that it that this movie made for this group also appeals to everybody else. Mm, 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 no? no. Okay. No, All right. We don't we don't get there. Uh, <laughs> films like 29 Palms use the sensation of horror to plumb our country's hang-ups with sex and violence, whereas a film like Shawshank Redemption hides big issues 
behind cheap melodrama and noirish shadows. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to lo- ever love anything more than these last couple times where the reviewer has gone like, we all know that the the Sunday after next will go on to be the classic. They crush Meanwhile, it with their- no one will remember insert classic movie that everybody knows. I've, just to get back to this whole like straw man that he's built about the sensitive straight man to, and to say like that this is... Uh, I understand a reviewer saying something like, um, you know who will really enjoy this movie are these people. Mm -hmm. I think if you like this and this and this, this is a movie for you. But to say a movie was made for someone or this movie was, um, this movie is not for other people is so condescending. So, uh, you you did not make the movie. You have no clue w- and who was in mind for these movies. Dare I say, as two sensitive straight men, I don't think either of us first watched this movie and went like, finally, a movie made especially for me. I yeah. watched it for what it was, for the story that was being told, and I identified with certain facets of it, and I didn't identify with other facets of it. Mm -hmm. I watched the story independently as it was told to me. I wasn't going like, now this is now this is pod racing. I didn't, you know. <laughs> uh, I completely agree, except for where you characterize me as a sensitive straight male. I, <laughs> speak for yourself, Dave. I'm a very tough boy. Okay. <laughs> the uh, number of times where I've had to reschedule on you and you've apologized to me says that is a lie. <laughs> 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 yeah okay ouch that's uh yeah. <laughs> that's a fair one i do that based on the stephen king novella rita hayworth and the shawshank redemption darabont's film follows what happens to andy dufresne after he's been sent to prison for killing his wife and lo- and lover i think he meant her lover mm-hmm. uh from the soapy courtroom theatrics that opened the picture to andy's prison escape how's that for a dramatic overhead that's in parentheses. And fuzzy wuzzy reunion with uh, Ellis Boyd Red Redding, Morgan Freeman, in Mexico. The film announces itself as beaches for straight men. Oh, dude. <laughs> Is it because it's it's emotional and, and affects people? Um, are, are the plots me, similar just, in any way? Sure. That's an excellent question. Let me just... Oh, no, wait. He doesn't explain any further. No, he... Okay, all right, all right. <laughs> we've, been, we've we've made our point, Dave. I'm getting to a point where, like, I think we're both anticipating that when you finish a sentence that we're not going to get any more context. No, that's like, the, we end immediately of, that's the end of the explanation. Jeez. We are, we are now moving on. All right. <laughs> now that you know that it's beaches for straight men. <laughs> Wow. King, okay. King's best story, including his brilliant it, are bathed in the glow of adolescent innocence and sexual desire. It's an aesthetic and emotional philosophy Darabont understands and respects, but erroneously applies to a story set inside a prison. Unlike the best prison dramas, like, say, Brisson's A Man Escaped or uh, Jean Genet's Un Chant de Mort or any episode of Oz, Sentimental twaddle like Shawshank Redemption, admittedly a few steps above the stinking pile of shit like The Last Castle. Oh, <laughs> so, my God. That's that's not me. That's him. <laughs> uh, says zilch about life behind bars and human interaction. So what movie was he watching? What? That's. Thank you. That's what this movie is about. Yeah. It's about how life behind prison and the the how the the phrase prison time how it wears you down to the point where you are no longer a functioning member of society and that you need to be in prison because you do not you do not understand the world without this that that when you leave prison you are so conditioned that you ask your boss for permission to use the bathroom that's how broken prison makes you and in contrast the power of hope and that and and that it it saves your spirit from uh being worn down in this way 
the movie's about hope. It's not about hopelessness, which is what I, both of these reviews, look, I don't want to assume, but I'm going to go out on a limb and say that neither of these reviewers were actually in a prison in the 40s. <laughs> I think that's a safe bet. I'll take so, that. So, so I'm not really interested in what they're saying this movie is missing in terms of like the actual prison experience in Maine in the 30s and 40s. Like, like I will listen to an old man who looks like Brooks who like if a guy wants to come up to me and he's like 95 and he goes, I I literally was in a prison very similar to this. Um, the movie does not really uh, appeal to me because it's it's really, you know, like I, I would listen to the specifics that they had to tell me about it, but I'm not interested in what two movie critics say is the real experience of prison and why this is not capturing the important aspects of it. What this movie is trying to do and trying to capture, it's nailing and knocking out of the park. And I'm not just saying that. Everybody's saying that. Yeah. You can't Ev find universally said yeah. the Internet where everything sucks and everybody's yelling. You can't find a one star <laughs> review for the movie. No. If you don't want to hear him talk about what he thinks prison life was like. uh you should mute me for right now. <laughs> okay all right here we go <laughs> i don't mean to be cynical but isn't prison life supposed to be a little less nostalgic than this shawshank redemption is supposed to be a drama but it's pitched somewhere between an intense thrill ride and romantic buddy comedy i don't see it as nostalgic i don't i don't see it as a buddy comedy no i don't see it as a comedy at all at all uh, there's l light moments there it's it's human this is again the same thing we've already talked about though which is why is this movie treating these inmates as if they're human beings and not right. just the worst uh elements of their you know prior mistakes or again or... very much like the godfather <clears throat> these are murderers or assumed murderers how dare they be treated with any level of complexity? Yes. Yeah. How, how they be? How dare we interpret them in any way besides evil? And 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 you can only wrap stories around them that accentuate that point. Mm -hmm. Do not talk about redemption. Do not talk about growth, or or in any way, shape, or form, anything besides bad guys. Bad guys fall down. <laughs> you know, like. The, I think the approach here is, is apparently just these guys are prisoners. They should be ruthless, awful people to each other the whole time. And the movie should be about him navigating that ruthlessness. But I don't know. Again, I don't know a ton about prison. Um, no. But I will say that I'd imagine that uh, you get a lot farther there by having friends and valuing loyalty um, than you do completely in isolation and by yourself. Uh, so to say that this that this movie is an incorrect, like this movie doesn't have an accurate portrayal of prison life. First off, I'm very confident in saying that this guy doesn't know a lot about prison life from personal experience. Um, again, I don't I can't prove that but um uh, i feel I, i'd be willing to bet we're confident yeah, yeah. yeah. um because he would have he would have said that if, if if he had the point to make hey i've i've lived this life yeah let me let me tell you from my perspective that would have been the the log line of the entire article yeah the value of winning the the value of having friends is apparent throughout this movie yeah, that the people who don't have friends are the ones who 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 are in trouble. I wouldn't call it nostalgic, but it's just pragmatic that like these these men are not, um, you know, at each other's throats constantly because they're going to spend the next forty years of their lives together. Let's uh, let's move on to the next one. Uh, <clears throat> I'm skipping a little bit down, but. Um... 
When the evil Captain Byron Hadley, played by Clancy Brown, almost threatens to throw Andy off a roof, Darabont captures this moment with a dramatic overhead. Later, when the old man, played by James Whitmore, is paroled and discovers that he's lonely on the outside, he... Uh, the moment would be touching if Red's trite narration didn't imply that life in prison isn't so bad after all. Freeman and Robbins are excellent performers, but it's but just as the latter is forced to play a hollow saint, the former is nothing more than a mouthpiece for the story's trite hallmarkisms. Red's race and social anxieties never register, and the one time he plays the role of angry black man, he's dutifully rewarded, how's that for irony, with a get-out-of-jail card. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, first of all, uh, Morgan Freeman, if you would like to read any Hallmark card that I've ever get <laughs> in my life, please do. No, I'm not even entirely sure where where he went there. There, there wasn't enough exploration of Red's race. Yeah, I think that was and, and that they never his anxieties never register. I mean, he says, I don't th I don't think I could make it on the outside. Like there's he has he has those moments I, 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 unless you literally cut out pieces of the movie like he he expresses his fear that like Brooks, he, he doesn't think he can handle it. He sees the gun in the pawn shop like he he absolutely expresses. He doesn't express them in the same way that other characters do. What, what do you I feel like, like I feel like you just wasted my time reading that like <laughs> it's literally not i'm sorry happens in the no no him like, <laughs> hey you're too too much of a nice guy don't apologize for him the, i'm the a fact, sensitive straight man <laughs> yeah, the fact that like like that's legitimately not what happens in the movie uh the other thing that we haven't hit on that stuck with me here is uh what an insulting reduction of Brooks's arc. Yep. Brooks's story is so pivotal to the movie. Uh, full stop. That's well, the end of but, thought. But it's that's so pivotal to the movie. That's what's so telling. That that says more than the review does. When when you see what they boil down to like one little sentence without even like any flourish. When you're like, oh, that's what you took away from maybe the most heartbreaking scene in movie history. Yeah. Great. So I know that your your emotions aren't working. Great. Yeah. yeah. And he describes what happens there and the consequences of what happens there is when the old man is paroled and discovers that he's lonely on the outside. That's, what a complete. Way to, you know, you got to make a Cliff Notes version of it somehow, you know. <laughs> I guess, but you also, what if you're writing a review, don't you strive to be correct? Uh, <laughs> isn't there some sort of like you you want to you want to you certainly want to summarize, but you're also aiming for accuracy. Hopefully, right. really, Darabont's version of King's story is gimmicky and schematic, and panders to our most contrived sexual anxieties and base no notions of revenge and guerrilla justice. By film's end, the heroic Andy has not only escaped prison, but every villain has been punished. Darabont's lead characters in Shawshank Redemption, Green Mile, and The Majestic all bring to mind classic James Stewart roles from It's a Wonderful Life and Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. Shawshank Redemption is drenched in movie nostalgia, but the story's fixation with movies and starlets like Raquel Welsh and Rita Hayworth doesn't mean anything. Just as posters in the film disguise plot twists, the film's naive sentimentality undermines the serious issues of violence, uh, sexual assault, manhood, and male bonding. Indeed, after the sisters are silenced, Darabont cranks up the unilateral act of hero worship. Prison goes from being mean and scary to, well, cute. Andy writes letters in order to get books into the prison library, starts doing everyone's taxes, and wins the hearts of guards and prisoners alike. Someone should bake a pie. Oh, wait, they do. I mean, as you're, as you're reading this out, I'm just kind of thinking, like, who is this for? 
we've, we've already decided you're wrong. Yeah, in 2004, you, yeah, you're you wrong. You wrote yeah. your review, and everyone went, nah. So, well, actually, everyone went, nah, and then you wrote your review. Right, right, right. <laughs> everyone agreed on, on what this movie, why this movie is great and what it means to them. And then he went, if I may, uh, all of you are wrong for yeah. liking this because the, it's saccharin or whatever. I literally just see old man yelling at Cloud. Yeah, because yeah. this is just like, you know that everybody disagrees with you and you know you're not going to change anybody. No, but guys, you don't understand. It's naive. Like, oh, what is he actually hoping for? That we're all going to come to our senses? Yeah, no, I don't, I don't understand uh, what the point of this is. Because at least um, the review at the time is like suggesting don't waste your time. Don't go see the movie. Not worth it. The world has already spoken. This is this is throwing throwing a uh, message in a bottle out into the ocean. This yeah. is uh, screaming into the wind. I think that this movie is not does not take a dark view of prison. Um, it does not try to show the gritty and grim reality of prison. Um, that I you know again without personal experience i i'm sure exists that there's a uh very um don't say real... that. you don't know that to be true i don't know that to be true that's very true i <laughs> i don't know um don't assume. <laughs> but, <laughs> but i can uh, conversely i don't think that this movie is um sentimental about prison it, it like i want to go to this reviewer and go like okay I'm giving you a writing prompt. You have to write a movie that takes place in a prison, but is about hope and redemption. Given those prompts, what do you do? Because all of these criticisms make sense if, if that's not the goal. If the goal is to like tell a real gritty, honest. Yeah, story, you're, like, you're, that's a great point. You're right. Blah, 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 blah. But like the, the, the job that was given was this story wanted to be told about hope and redemption. Mm -hmm. So it's not gonna focus on all of the things that you think are a, a completely accurate. And, and again, we've talked about it. You don't even know are an accurate representation, but what you interpret, it must've been like, if that's the story you want to tell, write that story. That yep. wasn't the story that, that, that was wasn't the here. story that was written. That's and and also the other thing too is like in service of that grittiness, uh, what you would necessarily have to do is sacrifice some of the humanity of the characters. Yep. And uh is we what... see that in both of the reviews we've read here, which is like, why weren't these people more mean to each other? Why and were the they so nice to each other? The humanity of the characters is what has made this movie stand the test of time and is what everybody remembers about it and is why everybody loves the movie. So you're losing that <laughs> for, for your story that you wanted to tell that like is going to go off in its own direction for how for whatever reason. Like, great, you're going to lose that and, and that's fine, but, but then tell that story. Yeah. Yeah, good luck. Yeah, good luck, and and ho let's see how many top one hundred it may lists it makes. So, That's what do you think? Has have these reviews changed your mind about the movie? Yeah, uh, it wasn't it wasn't another season of Oz, so I don't know what to. <laughs> I don't really know what what to what to make of it. They decided to go a different route and tell a different story, and as we've discussed, that was wrong. That was because wrong we know that there's only a limited number of stories that you can tell, and they all need to be dark and gritty yeah the, this the 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 especially the second reviewer it, it it felt a lot like when you're when you're in thanksgiving dinner with your with your conservative members of your family and like politics comes up a little bit and you try to steer the conversation away you know and you hear you hear something about like the prison industrial complex and how you know thank god we have the death penalty and you're like oh okay look, why don't we why don't we kind of change the why don't we push the conversation over here? And they're like, you know, and, and, and you know, another thing. And you're just like, no, 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 no. <laughs> like, could we, you know, this 
very clearly this person has an agenda, has an idea of what of what they interpreted this needed to be. And this movie did this movie was not the movie that they wanted. Mm -hmm. And 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 to do it after the fact is just the the balls. Yeah, to write this uh ten years later is um gutsy. I gotta respect that element of it. You know, we've always said uh anyone who's willing to go, I was right then, I'm right now. Um that part of the 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 strength of conviction is uh Hats off. I respectfully disagree with yeah, the. I mean, that's like, that's like, I mean, and I know they're on a downturn now, but that's like saying you actually didn't like any of the Marvel movies. Or and you were like, wrong to like them. Yeah. Right, you were right. wrong you, to have liked well, them. You, you didn't actually even, because they weren't, you know, like it's just like that. That's not, <laughs> that's a, that's a bold, that's a bold strategy. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It sure is. All right, so we're going to have to forego two truths and a lie. Too many people love this movie. Too, <laughs> Too many, many people, people love this movie. Um, uh, this has been Off the Mark. You can find me at DaveColombo.com, uh, DVD Columbo on Instagram, and Dave Columbo on TikTok. Leave us a review. Let us know what you thought of this. Uh, send us your own one star review for these movies and tell us what we should do next. Um, this has been that I'm going to sleep angry tonight. This is going <laughs> to be a lot, but uh, this is goodbye from Dave. Adios. Have a good one. This has been off the mark.